you say Jesus is? Pastor Carmel shared with a little bit of her heart this morning. For her right now, it seems like he is the champion. He is the champion in her life right now. Who in your life is Jesus right now? That's the source. That's the beginning source. So now we're going to bring forth a little bit into our riverbanks now. So last week we recapped that prayer life, our prayer, our life that flows from the assurance of who he is will never, ever leave our banks dry and our mouths dry. Is that going back to that analogy? When we begin to cultivate a prayer life that is totally flowing from who he is, rather than our circumstances, rather than who, how we think about ourselves, but when we begin to develop a prayer life that is so founded in who he is, our personal life, our personal riverbanks will never run dry. They may not be flowing exactly how we see. We may not be seeing all the fruits and the vegetables that we want, but they will not run dry because our prayers are based on who he is and not what he's doing. And then the second thing is the mouth of our river, the outflow of our lives will not run dry either. Okay? So it starts with the source. But now we're going to break down a little bit of the riverbanks and the mouth. I'm super excited to share this. So, <clears throat> so we're going to look at the river's overflow into our banks, into our personal lives, and then also the river overflow into our world. Okay? So this kind of means basically the overflow of your prayer life the overflow of your, your connection, your fellowship with Jesus in your own life. How is that touching your life? Because my heart and my goal today is that you fall in love with communion with him. We took communion this morning. It's all about communing with him. That just means being with him. It just means talking with him. It just means hanging out with him. It's being, that's what prayer is. Sometimes we complicate prayer so much that we have to get on our knees and, and cry. Yes, that may happen sometimes. But a lot of the times it's just talking, just listening, just being with him. How I talk to Boone is a lot of the times how I talk to Jesus. It's simple. <laughs> Hopefully good. <laughs> but it's simple. You don't have to be scared of it. You don't have to be scared of prayer. And so my desire is that you walk away from today excited to pray. Excited to create that river in your life. So we're going to look at Matthew 16, going back to that verse. And we're going to reread it. But then we're going to add on the next few things that Jesus says. Okay? So, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? So there we see the source, the source of who he is. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Okay, so we've built up to this point so far, all right? So now we're about to dive in. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And then he says this, and I tell you that you are Peter. I tell you that you are Peter. So the world had called this young man Simon, but when Peter had the revelation, he realized his source was Jesus, the son of the living God. All of a sudden, that river in his life began to flow. And the first thing that happens 
or so the second thing that happens after you realize who he is and you lean into who he is, the next thing that happens is you begin to grab hold of your identity of who he has called you to be. He is looking at each one of us today and he's saying, this is who you are. We, we sung about it this morning. This is who you are. Not what the world says. Not how you negatively think about yourself, but this is your identity. This is who you are. That is the first thing that begins to happen in our personal riverbanks. As that water and that connection to Jesus begins to happen, all of a sudden, you begin to realize who you are. And the first thing is this, the river produces life along the riverbanks. Just like physically in geography in the world, when we begin to create a fellowship with Jesus, when we begin to increase our prayer life and go to the source, all of a sudden, Jesus begins to produce identity inside of us. All of a sudden, he begins to produce life inside of who we are. And the first thing that he produces is that we are children of the king. Going back to that Revelations 22.1 verse, it says that the river flows from the throne of God and the lamb who is on the throne. You, this is your identity, that you are a child of the king who sits on that throne. If you don't get anything else today, that is who you are. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what lies you have said over yourself or what other people have spoken over you or what situation or what circumstances seem to be defining you. This is who you are. Could you imagine for one second if every single one of us in this room stopped comparing ourselves to other people? Stop believing that we were inadequate to do the greatest dream we have inside of our hearts. And we believed we fully believed and we're totally 100% convinced that this was our truth. How would your life look different? How would your life look different? How would you carry yourself? If you really believed that you were God's child, that you were his son, that you were his daughter. Boone talked about the vastness, the greatness of who he is. That's your dad. You have full access to go to his throne, to pray to him, to talk with him, to fellowship with him. This is who you are. Galatians 3.26 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourself with Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we became children of the King. This is the first revelation When you begin to really tap into who he is, you realize that he's your father and that you're his kid. The second thing that happens in our own personal riverbanks is his reign begins to overflow in our daily lives. It begins to produce the fullness of life in each of our lives. So a lot of us, we may have a lot of things going on. We may be having some financial issues, some job issues, some relationship issues. 
But I promise you, if you begin to pray, things will begin to shift. Things will begin to happen. But just like we talked about last week, the way God answers your prayers and the way God begins to bring that vegetation to your life, bring the, the different things to your, in your life to fullness may just look differently than you expect. And so you have to believe, going back to point one, that he is good. And that what he's doing is unpredictable, but who he is is constant. And when you lean into who he is, I can guarantee there will be fruit in your life. I didn't have this necessarily in my notes, but I just felt like we needed to go off on this for just one moment. Because I feel like a lot of us in here, we have probably been praying a lot of prayers. You're probably saying, uh, Bethany, I have tried the prayer thing. And there's some things in my personal life he has not answered. Or that he has let me down. And I can say, I understand. I 100% understand. I think I shared this in our, our second camp or in our south campus last week. I didn't share it here. But five years ago, I think it was five years ago, five-ish years ago, I had graduated from the university. And my entire family, Boone's family, they all saved up. And my graduation gift was to get LASIK surgery because I am blind. If I take my contacts out, I can't tell if you're a man or a woman until you get about right here. I am blind. So I was so excited for LASIK surgery because as a little kid, every time someone would say, who needs to be healed, I would raise my hand. I would step forward since I was in second grade every single time, believing God was going to heal me. Absolutely believing it. And I'd, they'd pray for me, and as a little kid, I'd grab my contact. You're probably not supposed to touch it, but I'd move my contact over to see if I could see. It obviously didn't. Nothing had changed. <laughs> many, many times I did this, over and over and over again. And so when they told me that my graduation gift was LASIK surgery, I was ecstatic. Yes, Jesus hadn't healed me miraculously, but he was going to use the hands of the doctors to heal me. And I was so excited. One month before my surgery, I got a, do you know what fever blisters are? I've never had them in my life. But I had a fever blister happen in my eye. And it, it developed on the cornea of my eye. And a long story short, for seven months, they were trying surgery, procedure after procedure, trying to get this to heal because basically it was just a massive blister and wound in my eye that was getting deeper and deeper into the layers of my eye. In, Decem in December, it finally ended up rupturing. And I ended up having to have a cornea transplant. So for seven months, I was pretty much most days on bed rest because they were so afraid my eye would rupture. And so I couldn't do anything. Uh, sometimes the pain was so bad that it would cause my left eye to shut, and so I would be totally blind. I mean, it was just a crazy freak deal, crazy thing. But two things happened. I grabbed hold of that revelation that Jesus is my source. I grabbed hold of I'm going to lean into who you are and that I know your character is good and I know who you are. I know that you are the healer. 
And even though my answer to prayer is not being met, it's actually getting worse. My situation's way worse. I'm going to believe who you are. And I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to pray and ask for my healing. Even to, to this day, in fact, on Monday, I had to make a, an emergency trip up to Lubbock to see my two uh, special doctors there for my eye because I was having issues with it. That prayer has not fully manifested. But do I still believe? Do I still pray? Yes. Because when I pray and there's no immediate fruit or vegetation, what's happening is my river is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And so more water is beginning to flow in my life. Does that make sense? My faith is getting deeper and deeper to connect to that source. And so I want to challenge you. If there has been some prayers that maybe you feel like God has let you down, this is kind of tough because I know there's probably some big ones. You need to let go of being angry at him. I say that because I've dealt with it myself. It is a daily choice to believe in who he is and to trust in who he is and not what he's doing. And I want to challenge you. Pray again. Pray again. If there are some things in your life that you've given up on, pray again. Pray again. Make that river deeper in your life. Because I promise you this. Just like I said, your banks will not run dry. The different flowers, the different vegetations that you see may not be what you're expecting. But that river, that life that Jesus wants to give to you, he will, I promise you, he'll show up. He will show up. Because of the situation with my eye that has taken place, wow, totally going off topic, but here we go. Last year, Boone spoke at an FCA. And a little girl walks up to Boone and asks, uh, like a, I think she's a freshman in high school. She walked up to Boone to ask for some prayer. And Boone got teary-eyed and called me over. This young girl had been diagnosed with cat scratch fever and she was losing sight in her eyes. I knew exactly what she was going through. The, the pain that she was feeling, I knew exactly what she was going through. And if I would have been angry at God for not healing me, yet... I could not have been there for her. You see, all those seven months laying on my bed, asking God to heal me, praying and believing, praying scripture after scripture over my life, I was digging that water. I was digging my river. I was creating my river bank to be bigger, to hold more water. 
Because when someone came to drink from my life, there was water. There was faith to believe for her healing. We keep in contact. She's fully recovered sight. She's living almost like nothing ever happened. Does your riverbank have water? Does your riverbank have water? He wants to reign in every single area of your life. That's what prayer can do. Yes, he is going to answer prayers, and you're going to immediately see, see that tree pop up in your life. And that's fun. It's awesome. We were driving to the beach, and this is who God is. It's his character. Sometimes we take him so seriously, but we were driving to the beach, and I don't know if you guys know of this, this animal that's in that wild reserve, uh, Neil Guy. It's called Neil Guy. It looks kind of like a, a weird-looking deer. But it's in that reserve right before you get to Port Isabel. And the Tyson side of the family, they all love hunting. And so they were just like, we would love to see a Neil guy. And I can't remember who it was, but someone was like, Jesus, we asked for a Neil guy. It's in the heat of the day. There is no way, no reason for a Neil guy. They usually come in the morning or the evening. There's no reason for one to be out and about. Within five seconds, there's a massive one running through the field. Why? Because there was a river from us to Jesus. And he's like, let me just play with them today. This is who God is. He will produce life and, and fun inside of your life. But then he will also produce plants and things that you aren't expecting. But it all comes back to prayer. Are you connecting with him? Are you creating that river to flow through your life? To flow along every bank, to flow along every aspect of your life. I was in a, a wedding right after Boone and I had gotten married. And <clears throat> I ordered this dress. I, don't, I hate shopping. And I ordered this dress online so I didn't have to go to a store. But let me just tell you, China sizes are really different from the U.S. size. So if you, just letting you know, don't, fat, like, they're, they're different sizes. And so I ordered a typical size that I would be in the United States. It came in. I couldn't get my arm through the armhole. It was so tight. There's no way it was going anywhere else on my body. And I was just like, the wedding's, like, basically tomorrow. And it, was, it had to be a specific material, all this different stuff that I didn't understand. There's no way I could go find one. So Boone goes, well, just pray. Do you think God really cares about my dress? Like, he's trying to deal with poverty and World hunger. I mean, like, this is just my dress. In a wedding, it's not a big deal. But it was my riverbank, and he wants to produce life. It's who he is. So I prayed for it with little faith, zero faith, to be honest. It was definitely Boone's faith. And he said, okay, try it on. I'm just, I'm cringing. <laughs> All of a sudden, he goes in the other room, so I, I'm trying the dress on. My arm fits. The rest of the dress fits absolutely perfect, as if it had literally been tailored for my body. Jesus will provide life. Jesus will do something in your life if you just create the river. In the small things and in the big things. He will create tiny blades of grass and he will create massive sequoia trees in your life. 
but all you have to do is make sure there's a river flowing. Connect with him. Talk to him. Listen to him. So the overflow in our personal banks is the two things. Is Peter, he said to Peter, this is who you are. He gives you identity. And he produces life. His fullness of life in your life. It says this, river banks are constantly changing and sculpted by the flowing river. So in our personal lives, applying the same principle, is your daily fellowship with Jesus sculpting who you are? Is your daily fellowship sculpting who you are? I ask a lot of questions in my, in my preachings because the truth is, is questions cause you to actually grab hold of it. Because I can tell you a lot of things, but when I ask you a question, all of a sudden it becomes personal. Is your daily fellowship with Jesus sculpting who you are? If not, what is? And then maybe we need to change that. The second question from the riverbank is God's rain flowing through and changing the areas of your life. So just like when a river flows through a creek bed, it begins to shape the land. It begins to create different grooves through the ground. Is your prayer life allowing God's rain from his throne to shape different areas of your life. So the second point is, so our first one, the river source is who he is, who he is on the throne. The second is that he will produce life on our river banks when we cultivate water flowing through our lives. So let's go back to our story real quick. We're going to wrap it up pretty quickly here. So going back to the story, let's reread it one more time here. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. So there's the first, the riverbank. And then here is the mouth. And it says, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The second is this. The river flows through the mouth of something larger than itself. We talked about that. The mouth and the delta of an actual river. It is the place where the, your personal life flows into the world. That is the mouth, okay? We tracking with this analogy so far? Have I been able to make that clear? So our prayer life and fellowship with Jesus should flow to the world and others around us. The destination of a practical ge ge geographic river, it flows from the source through the riverbanks, and then it hits a mouth of the river. It hits a bigger body of water. And so there are three areas that we're looking at today. The source is who he is. The riverbank is our personal life. And the last one 
is something that is bigger than you and me, and it is the world. It is your neighbors. It is your coworkers. Is your prayer life not just changing and affecting your life, but is it overflowing into the world? So going back to that verse, I'm sure you're probably like, how did she get that? I can kind of see the, I tell you, you are Peter. I can, I can see how that's personal. But how did she get the world is this? Because we've probably heard this taught many times, and we think that Peter is the rock. But I'm, like I said, I, wanted, I actually graduated the university in history, thanks to my dad. He, always, he was a history teacher, and so I kind of followed in his footsteps. So we're going to actually look at the history and the context in the next 10 minutes of where they are and why this part of the verse is so vital. And so let's, I'm going to reread that part one more time. It says, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So <clears throat> there's this place. It says that Jesus took his disciples up to Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was actually a really far, it was a region outside of where Jesus usually did most of his ministry. So there had to have been a purpose of why Jesus was going to this place. Because all of his disciples were Jewish boys. And all those Jewish boys knew what was at the place of Caesarea Philippi. It was the Mardi Gras of all Mardi, Mardi Gras. It was the nastiest place you could possibly go. It was the most wicked area in the entire region of Israel. Because what happened at that place was this. You can see where it says, it kind of, you can see almost down here was about what it would be like. It was a temple, these temples here. So there's a little bit up at the top, there's a little bit more of a panoramic picture. The mountain that these, this temple was built on was called the rock. And what happened at these temples and these platforms built into this mountain, this rock, was called Pan Worship. It was the mythological god of Pan, who is half man, half goat. And what would take place on that stage was absolute, full sexual craziness. This is graphic, but there's a point to this, huh? He was a fertility god. And so there would be massive orgies in public on the stages of the rock. And then they would bring out goats, and then they would begin to mate with the goats. It was absolute disgusting. These Jewish boys that when they started walking to Caesarea Philippi, like they knew where they were going. I'm sure they were like, why is Jesus taking us here? Because of this. When he turns to Peter and he says, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, I am that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Something rises up in Jesus. And he says, yes, Peter, let me tell you who you are. You are a world changer. You are someone that can bring my heaven to earth. Because you've tapped into the source. And where do I want you to flow to? 
this place. Because upon this rock, I will build my church. And you see that little, it's actually, a, it was a big pool. And it, a massive river flowed from that cave. And it was called the Gates of Hades. The destination. And he's asking, will you be so bold? Would you be so wild enough to build my church in the darkest of the darkest places to the people that nobody will go after? Would you love them? For some of us, you may be hanging out in point number two. You're needing to grab hold of your identity in him. You're, you're needing to rest in that place of building a deeper water and to begin to pray again for some things in your life, for maybe some dreams that are in your heart that you've given up on. Maybe some healings in your personal life. But maybe for a lot of us, we're good at praying for ourselves. But that, I've called you for something great. I've called you to love the people that are totally unlovable. I've called you to be the source that carries me to the untouchable things of this earth. And so my, my third question is, is your prayer life overflowing to this world? How can you be a river that connects God on the throne to the rocks of this earth? So we talked about three parts of the river, the source. It starts at the throne. Has your prayer life, has your connection with Jesus, does it start with who he is? Not what he does, but who he is, with his goodness, with his love. The second, does your prayer life, does your fellowship with him flow and touch who applies to our life? But he loves you so much that he doesn't just want to change your life and touch your life, but he wants to use you. He wants to have a purpose for you and your purpose Your purpose is to bring him. Just like a river flows to something bigger and greater, your life flows to something bigger and greater. To love the world, to love the people around you, to love the neighbors that call the cops on you because you're having Bible study at your house. That people, to love the people that are trafficking those across the border, not just those that are being trafficked, but those hard hearts that are doing the trafficking. do we do this? How do we do those three things? It's so simple. Pray. Pray. Be with them. 
you're probably asking me, Bethany, I don't have time to be in my closet or at my house and pray all day. That's okay. Sure, set aside a designated time, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want. But I learned this from, from my dad. I loved road trips because I was the only kid that could stay up with him. It was probably illegal, but I would climb onto the center console and I'd just sit there as a little kid. And if you ever pay attention to my dad, he'll get lost in his own mind or he looks like he's daydreaming. And he'll just be driving and he'll do this. If you see him at a restaurant, I'm sure, I mean, all of you guys have seen him. He'll be at a restaurant, you'll be talking to him, and then a few minutes later, he'll just. What's happening? He's just praying for one moment. He's just making sure that river's running. Because the next thing, as you're eating with him, he'll turn and look at you and has some dramatic revelation to speak into your life. Why? Because he has that river running. And he is now the source that connects you from heaven to earth. And so I remember... I asked him, of course, like, Dad, what are you doing? I mean, as a little kid, you think that's kind of weird. So he's just like, oh, I'm just telling Jesus I love him. And so he gave me this challenge, and I'm going to leave you with this. Prayer is simple. It's being with him. It's talking to him. It's listening to him. Prayer is how we get to know him. If you want to know the source, if you want to tap into the source of your river, get to know him. How? Pray. Prayer is how God begins to, to reign in your personal life, to, to begin to release life in your banks, to begin to show you that you're his son and that you're his daughter. It's through prayer. Just talking to him, and he'll begin to tell you who you are. He'll begin to tell you what to do with your job. He'll begin to tell you how to change those relationships around in your life. And prayer is the conduit from God's throne to the world. Through us, through our prayers. And through prayer, we are given the keys to the kingdom. The last part of that story, it says, and I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What does that mean? It means that when we begin to pray, it's like we begin to set up rocks or to set up different things within that river and it begins to direct the flow of that river to different places. Does that make sense? And we begin to allow heaven to come to our workplace, to nations, to our families. It is through prayer. And so my challenge with you today is yes, set aside time to pray for different things, but start first, 10 times a day, tell, you, tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. As you're driving, create that river. 
have certain stop, I, I don't like stopping at stoplights. But all of a sudden, my, my perspective has changed about stoplights because my normal routes, I have a specific stoplight for a specific person in my life. I always have to drive down Ware Road to 107. That stoplight starts with Boone. That's a stoplight. So every time I'm there, one sentence prayer, I pray for Boone. Another stoplight is my parents. Another stoplight, Boone's parents. It's simple. Because what happens during my day is my river is just flowing. And so maybe you don't need to set up stoplights, but just start with 10 times a day. Connect with him. And I promise you this, something will begin to change in your life that river will begin to touch different parts of your river bank. And that river will begin to touch different parts of this world in your life. Let's close our eyes. Jesus, this morning, we thank you so much. We thank